Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Today I want to talk about using wood as your primary source of heat. A lot of people talk about how firewood is the cheapest way to heat your home, and while that's true, it's also the least convenient way to heat your home. If you've watched some of our other videos or you heat with wood yourself, you know exactly how much work goes into preparing for one full winter of wood. But it doesn't just stop with cutting, splitting, and stacking the wood. There's a lot of maintenance that goes on with the wood stove as well. You have to keep the glass clean, you've got to empty the ash every couple of weeks, and you've also got to clean your flue once or twice a season. Today we're going to walk through cleaning the glass, emptying the ash, and starting a fire, and then we're going to talk about some of the general differences between a wood-burning stove and an open fireplace. So what we're going to do first is go ahead and open up the door and empty out the ash. Now this is something that you have to do probably every two to three weeks. So two things to note here, whenever you're emptying ash, you always want to make sure you're using a metal container to put your ash into just in case there's any coals that are left. And number two, you never want to take out all of the ash. The ash acts as an insulator for the coals and you'll get longer burn time so that you can continue throwing wood in without having to start from scratch and building a new fire. So you always want to leave at least an inch of ash in the firebox. As far as cleaning the glass goes, I know they make a wood stove glass cleaner, but I've had pretty good luck with uh, just water and wood stove ash. So you just dip a paper towel in the water here, dip it in a little bit of ash. That ash on your paper towel provides just enough abrasion to get off any soot and creosote off of your glass without scratching it. All right, so now that we got all the ash emptied out with the exception of the last inch and we've got the glass door cleaned, we're going to go ahead and get the fire ready to light. I'm going to show you how I prepare a fire in the wood stove. Everybody's got their own technique, but this is what I do. And it generally allows me to light the fire and walk away for a few hours every single time. So I usually start off with two big splits on either side of the wood stove. And that's going to be fuel for the fire after the kindling catches and is what's going to allow me to be able to walk away and not have to tend to the fire right after I light it. Next, I'm going to throw in three or four balls of newspaper. After that, I'm going to grab all of this scrap kindling that I get off of the splitter. When I'm splitting wood, all this stuff that you would normally just throw out, I save and I put in a pile because it makes great kindling. So I just set that right on top there. Then I move to some bigger stuff. And then if I have room for on top, I'll throw one more big piece in on top that will eventually make all of this catch. So the goal here is to be able to light this, shut the door, and be able to walk away and not have to tend to it at all. So let's see if we did our job. So you want to leave this door cracked here a little bit because when this first gets going, this wood stove is airtight and you don't want to starve the fire for oxygen. All right, so that was about five minutes there. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the door down. I think we're caught well enough that we can get by without the extra oxygen. So the only thing we have left to do at this point is turn the air control down so that the fire doesn't get too hot and we over fire the firebox. So all that is, is there's a little control here and you just slide that in and it shuts off the oxygen going to the fire. So you get a more controlled burn, a slower burn and a longer burn time. I want you to pay attention to what happens to the fire when I shut down the air. Now watch what happens when I open it back up. All 
So as I just showed you, the airtight door in conjunction with the damper air control on the side of the wood stove is what really sets apart a wood stove from a free burning fireplace. Your typical free burning fireplace is only about 25 to 30% efficient, whereas your wood stove is anywhere from 75 to 85% efficient, depending on what kind of stove you get. And what that means is that with a fireplace, 25 to 30% of the heat that the fire kicks out is actually staying in your home. The rest is going up your chimney. With a wood stove, 75 to 85% of the heat is actually staying in the house. So it's a lot more efficient. You'll burn a lot less wood with a wood stove. So let's talk about how a wood stove works. As I just showed you, reducing the airflow makes the wood burn slower, which you might think means the wood is just gonna smolder and not kick off any heat at all. Well, that's where the secondary combustion comes in. In this slow-mo shot, the air control is turned all the way down, but the fire is still burning hot. The tubes on the top of the firebox introduce preheated external air into the firebox, and when this preheated oxygen comes into contact with the gases and smoke emitted from the smoldering logs, it ignites. This is called secondary combustion or reburn. In a standard fireplace, this gas and smoke go up the chimney as wasted energy, but in a wood stove, it allows you to burn the logs slower, but take full advantage of these gases. All right, so now we know how the wood stove works on paper. Let's see what its real world performance is. According to my weather station right now, it is 29 degrees outside, 71 degrees in the house, and it's 1045 at night. So like I said, it's 1045 at night. I'm loading in some pretty good chunks of cherry and ash here. And we'll see what it looks like when we come back in the morning. All right, so like I said, it's 1045 at night. We just got the stove loaded with two pretty hefty pieces of cherry and three pieces of ash. We got the stove damper down. Well, we're gonna come back down in the morning and check to see what the indoor temperature is, what the outdoor temperature is, and see what we have remaining of this fire. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome back. It is time for our morning time check-in. So it is 726 in the morning. Uh, the last time we loaded the wood stove was at 1045 at night. So we're a little over eight and a half hours since we last loaded the stove. Looks like the temperature in the house dropped from 71 to 66 and the temperature outside dropped from 29 to about 26.8 degrees. Let's go ahead and check and see what we have left in the firebox. So if you look inside there, you can still see some coals, but once I get this door opened up and disturb those coals, they'll liven right back up. All right, so there you go. I still have a really nice bed of coals here after eight and a half hours. So that's what you can expect in terms of overnight burn. I probably could have gotten at least another hour or two out of this, so probably at least a 10 hour burn time. But I'm gonna go ahead and get the stove loaded back up here for the day. But anyway, if you're interested in heating with firewood, I can't recommend it enough. It, there's just something about a firewood heat that just warms you to the bone when it's really cold out in these January and February months. If you're interested in learning more about alternative ways to heat with firewood, my buddy CJ over at Mallard 5 Farmhouse has a couple of videos on his firewood furnace that he has in his basement. And my buddy Dave at Ohio Hilltops has an outdoor wood boiler. And those are just two other ways that you can heat with firewood that's not a wood stove. I'll put a link to both of their wood heat videos in the description below. But anyway, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.